Hi, uh, I just wanted to uh, touch base with you because I think the thing that we want to do is uh, figure out, uh, you know, what um, what we'll be doing this coming week in our landscape figure and studio class. The um, I, I gave you a little demo yesterday uh, or the day before on how to draw by just following lines. My feeling, okay, is that um, I hope you understand what I'm asking you to do, but sometimes I think students don't get it, all right? So I'm going to try and explain it again to you, and hopefully uh, this will work um, so that you can make this uh, part of how you draw, all right? Because I honestly think this is the, the approach to drawing that will teach you a lot about making an idea and not necessarily coming with a preconceived one, but what I found over and over again is when I draw this way, all right, the key to drawing this way, by the way, is to have the speed all the same, so you can feel the length of lines. And I think that if you understand that, uh, you'll be able to draw the, uh, very well in proportion. So I think that this is one of the things just to keep in mind. But, you know, I, I started a drawing for you before, but I'm gonna start it again. All right, and just say that I just follow a line, usually one that's closest to me, the book that's down here on the uh, on the table. And you know, at a certain point, that book uh, I come to the spine of the book, and then it comes comes over the um, the book, and I have to I have to fill the distances in here. Not only that, but I also let my eye play off the um, the angle, right, just to kind of get a feeling for how how big it is, all right, or how long it is, and then. And then, of course, you have to kind of um, just kind of decide which way you want to go, all right? But at a certain point, you're um, deciding this is the, the direction, okay? And that this is the way you want to progress back into the space, okay? You're going to go something like this, all right? And that's a line that you have that kind of goes through the whole drawing. This is what Paul Clay said when he said, um, take a line for journey. Um, honestly, I've been teaching this for years. It is a way of coming up with an interesting composition, but more than that, it actually is a way to teach you to think abstractly about drawing and not necessarily always try to draw an object because I don't think that that's all there is to what art is about. It is about a, an element of abstract thinking. And that element is something that I think, um, you know, there was a, there was a saying it, that it's the invisible that needs to be found, not the visible. And I think that when you start to realize that, uh, the objects are the visible, all right? But if we follow lines, it, it can lead us in a lot of different ways. We may be able to even find an elephant in here based upon the lines that we're uh, looking at. As a matter of fact, this might be a face right here, all right, if you start to realize that I, I um, maybe Bart Simpson, all right? So in any case, I could probably turn it into Bart Simpson, but I just want you to understand that this is the kind of thing that we, we need to find, all right? And the, this style of drawing isn't, uh, isn't new. Uh, we can go back in a lot of different cultures, not only in, the Western, in Western culture, but in Eastern cultures as well. And one of the things that's been said about uh, drawing we're coming up with ideas, is it's line that gives us that, all right? Not necessarily shading, all right? Not trying to make an object, but just line, and line variation, and line, um, the way lines interact. And when we look here, if we were just to discuss what this is about, it is about a certain rhythm, movement, uh, direction, all right? Almost like a dance, you know? My hand is following that, that uh, drawing. All right, so if you come to understand that, there's a lot of different levels of understanding when it comes to drawing, and a lot of people just see the, the surface, all right? So I'm trying to teach you to go beyond that. This is not hard to do. As a matter of fact, this is probably better to start this way than it would be to start by trying to draw objects in just one at a time, make a bowl and put a piece of fruit in. So let's go to the bowl here and just say this. I can come around the bowl here, and at a certain point I come to the, to the orange and the orange is in the bowl and I might follow it and then the um, the bananas in the bowl and I might follow it all right so just give you an idea of how I'm constructing the bowl but do we want to um, do we want to um, just 
trying to follow the, you know, the objects? No, we want to follow a line. And when we come to a, where it intersects, we can only go one way, all right? So if I decide to go this way, then that's the way we're going, okay? And then, you know, we can, we can certainly find other elements that come off of the, these lines, like this uh, violin here, all right? And how the violin plays against this. And the flowers that might come in between the violin and the, and the cloth here. Okay, and you don't have to be perfect. The idea is that you're you're understanding how this is all working, and then maybe that's your that's the violin. From there, we'll come back to the bowl. All right, uh, we can follow the bowl and its shape. All right, we can find the base of it. We can see it go around. But as we do that, we might be starting to look for other things like shadows that come across and how they might just come across like this and then go like that. What you're doing is you're creating shape and shape is very, very important in making anything work as far as the painting is concerned. So a lot of people, they don't give enough uh, importance to shape, but it is, it is like the parts of a puzzle. They all fit together. And when they fit together, they give you an idea, all right? So, uh, you know, they communicate an idea. So here we are and we're just, Kind of just playing along here, trying to find maybe some of the elements of uh, the design, okay, and uh, you know how they they may interact here, and um, and how much do we want? And you don't have to be perfect. This is not about being perfect, but it is about understanding. So. We can come back in here, we can see the book that's coming out of here, all right, and how it comes down, and then how it makes a shape. And we'll just come over here now and um, deal with the book as it goes across like this, all right, and then come back to the violin and see how the violin, and, and actually sometimes you might make it a little bit uh, too small, okay, that's okay. Just don't worry about it. Just Follow it, okay? Here it runs into the plant. There's some things like this that go on. And then there's it hits a line and it goes like this. And that's that 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 little line is making that that ball that's there and something like this. All right. So you can see how this is all playing out. What things happen little by little, all right? And uh, we might come back down here like this come into the plant that's there, all right? Some of the leaves are going up up here. The little stem that's coming down, all right? As it hits the other stem, and then how it goes off the leaf that's here, how that leaf comes around and goes something like this. All right, so um, if anything, you know, to complete this, we would be uh, following lines and uh, looking for shape. But I want you to learn this, all right? I want you to learn how we do this, all right? So that you can help, you know, design your own paintings in a way that, that are interesting. And I know this works. I've been doing this for many years with my students. And I think that the, um, the key is to um, understand how all of this, this works together. And here, there's a, a part of the, the pot comes over the, the, um, the book like that. All right, so uh, one more thing. I'll just do this part in here so you can see how I might handle putting a picture in. But so we're just coming back. And you can kind of see how I, I, I make this idea happen. It's a little different than what you would normally expect, all right? But this is the way um, I think I want to teach you to draw. 
And if I can, all right, I think we're going to have some really good um, good work. All right. So here the bull casts a shadow, the shadow comes down, and it kind of comes over the book and does something like that. All right. So if anything, I hope I'm making you a believer. All right. But this is the kind of thing that I want you to learn. And with that, uh, you'll be able to make uh, paintings. And when I did this particular one that I showed you right here, that was done exactly that way. It was done by just following lines to get a composition. So then you can kind of work on it and uh, get it to where you want it to be. Okay, so that's one thing. The next thing I want to do is I want to talk to you about the, uh, some artists, okay? Because what we want to do right now is, um, is uh, just get things uh, organized for you. So I'm going to um, I've got to look for something here real quick. All right, um, let me see if I can just reduce the full screen. And I'm going to go to um, all the things that are going on on my desktop. All right, because I want to get this one lecture for you. Okay, and um, I'm going to share it with you now. All right, so we're going to share the screen. And this is a lecture on this line that I'm talking about. All right. So I think the, um, uh, you know, you're going to review this before the class on Monday. All right. And that, this is my intention. So, um, you know, this would be the thing that sets things in motion. Uh, when we look at the, um, the work of um, Mary Cassatt, the influences of the Japanese prints on Mary Cassatt were pretty strong. When we look at a piece like this, you can almost get an idea that if you could follow those lines, you pretty much have the same uh, kind of composition that I found in the still life. There's a very interesting and unique kind of perspective involved here. I'm sure she probably was, uh, you know, maybe she was in the boat. Um, she had her sketchbook. Maybe she did a line drawing. We know her to do that, all right? So uh, the, the term Japonism was a, a, a a term that really was coined in um, it was it was against the um, the art of the Renaissance. It was actually the antithesis. It was more Asian in its uh, relationship and influences. And uh, you have to understand that the, uh, the the Renaissance painting had controlled things so much that artists just needed a break. Well, here's a great example of following that line. But this is at the National Portrait Gallery, and this is in the show this year. All right, and I want you to really just understand that because this is this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for you to do for me. And I'm gonna tell you, you can sit down in your house and you can just knock off drawing after drawing this way, all right, without having to really think about it, just follow the line. So Paul Clay, this is what Paul Clay was about. Uh, he actually wrote a book on the sketchbook for young children. And one of the things was to just follow that line, take it on a journey, all right? We don't know where it's going to lead. It just kind of moves through things. But if, you, if you're good at drawing, it will all work. And one of the keys to drawing is to keep your eye, mind, and hand in the same place. All right, try to look out of your dominant eye. If you don't know what that is, we'll talk about it next time. And uh, to feel the, the length of the lines in relationship to each other. So it, this is quite uh, wordy here. I'm not going to go into it other than to say that you know, it's, it started around 1872, and it was influenced by the Japanese prints. And, you know, artists, um, you know, a lot of different artists took to this, especially Egon Schiele, uh, Gustav Klimt, all right? They were, they were strongly influenced. So these are some of the works. And this is the Renaissance painting. So you can see that you could follow the lines in this Renaissance painting as well. But this is about light and shade. This is about what we call chiaroscuro. And I think that's uh, an important way of working, but that's the second level. That's after you find your composition. So the line is what's gonna give it to you, all right? So start concentrating on a line like this, all right? Because you can do that at home, all right? And somebody sitting watching TV, you can just do line drawing upon line drawing of them sitting there. So I think just, just do it, all right? This is a Nagon Sheila or a Gustav Klimt, I think it's a Sheila. All right, and you get an idea of how that was worked. But these are line drawings by students. And, uh, you know, they're really incidental things. I mean, here somebody just sat down and what was on their 
top of their uh, table is what they worked on. And I think I may have mentioned um, Wayne Tebow, but that's what Wayne Tebow did. He couldn't figure out what he wanted for a, a series. So he just started with what was on his uh, table. All right. But here you can kind of get an idea. All of these could become paintings. All right. And the clarity of the line is really important. And the speed of the line is really important. And um, all of these artists uh, work this way. So this is a very beautiful piece. All right. And this, this is Nagon Sheila. So if you don't know who he is, Richard Diebenkorn. I showed Diebenkorn's drawings later. Gustav Klimt, uh, Matrek, Modigliani. All right, this is a Modigliani. And then here's some uh, modern works, all right? So you can see that they're really kind of outlined and then colored in. This is a Richard Diebenkorn abstraction. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about abstraction in a little while too, but right now, this is one that I did, all right? Where I followed the lines and really got all my shapes. Um, this is Tom Wesselman. Tom Wesselman's a good one to look at because he really uh, did the drawing first, then he added the color arbitrarily. Even though it's somewhat realistic, he didn't paint the model. He just drew the model. Probably the model left and went home. He worked from memory or design. But these are all artists where the, the line is the most important thing. And when we look at a piece like this, it's all about line, all right? The, the silhouette is, is called mass, but the edges of this are all about line. And there's another egg on Sheila. And here is a uh, Vuillard. And Vuillard, you can see just drawing through a plant, just coming up with shapes and then adding color to it. Another piece, beautiful. All right, I hope I'm inspiring you because that's what we're looking for. Now, this is a Dutch painting, all right, with, where you have a lot of line, but you have a lot of shading and you lose it. This is a little bit flatter, almost more like the Japanese, but an artist that was influenced to work this way was George O'Keefe or a little Nesbitt. Okay, and you can see the simplicity here. So where did that lead? That kind of drawing led to hard edge painting, all right? And I'm trying to get you to be a little bit more sensitive to abstraction because I think that you have to know that, that when we make an object, we use abstract and representational things, all right? Just like when we make a sentence, we have words that actually make pictures, like a tree, and we have words like is and why and the, which is, these are abstract elements, all right? And you have to understand them. To put them together, you put the representation and the abstraction together and you make a thought. So you really have to understand this part of uh, art. And a lot of you right now, this is where you're, you're starting to learn, all right? But these are artists that have come to understand abstraction. And this may be very realistic, by the way. This may be a shadow on a sidewalk. Uh, this is a woman by the name of Susan Abbott, and she's very oriented to um, outlining, and these are her works, all right? And um, it will give you an idea of her, uh, you know, linear drawing. You can see the drawing there perfectly, all right? So, and then the color is hard edge painting, and that was done in the 1950s and 60s, and that's where artists, they didn't want to change the edges, they just wanted to change the colors next to the edges, which would then make you see the edge differently. And this is one here. So I'll give you an idea of what uh, artists are working with when they work with a hard edge, all right? But it's very beautiful. This led to minimalism and an artist that I may have talked to you about is Ellsworth Kelly. And Kelly did these line drawings like this. And if you wanna see another artist that does this, it's David Hockney. So go study David Hockney's drawings. But now the other thing that I want you to do is I am asking you to do some black and white studies on paper that are abstract. Now you're gonna say, well, is the flower abstract? It is in a way because it's a shape more than it is just an object. But the one that's really abstract is the one to the far right, which is sort of a half moon shape. It's black there in the corner. And all I'm looking for is how you, you work with black and white on the rectangle. All right, so I asked you to do me a few studies. Um, try them. Franz Klein is the artist to look at, all right? So I think that's uh, it, but here you see some of these works on the lower left-hand corner. Those are all uh, shapes inspired by 
plants, all right? That's Ellsworth Kelly. So when we look at the, the color pieces to the right, all right, it'll give you an idea of how you might find patterns of shape and color. Now this all goes back to yin and yang, the very first basic symbol in symbolism, all right? And symbolism is something that maybe we'll touch on here in a little while, but right now, you know, the symbolic nature of things is that artists speak in symbols. And I think that you have to understand the whole nature of the contrast between black and white in designing, which I'm gonna try and teach you. So this is, uh, this is Turner's work. You can kind of get an idea of how Turner was working. This is, by the way, um, and he was an abstract thinker. Here is um, Ellsworth Kelly, and when we look at the Kelly, that's a stem, all right? Now I changed the colors so that you wouldn't know that it's inspired by a plant, but that's just a stem coming up. And here's artists that were working like Ellsworth Kelly and um, Franz Klein, all right? And I think I may have said something to you. This is a student, by the way, that I taught by the name of Trevor um, Young, and Trevor is showing at the Addison Ripley Gallery, and a lot of his work is uh, the, the difference between black and white. And, and white is when you see an object. What light makes, you know, in other words, if you were to say light and dark, what we see from light is, is that we can see something. But in the dark, it's, it's obliterated and we can't see it. I think this is the difference between yin and yang. So this is a, a great example of illustrating this story. And these are more of Trevor's. This is one of mine. So I'll give you an idea how I've gone after the silhouette, but that's the backlighting. And I think I assigned you a painting where you were gonna do some backlighting for me. All right, this is another one of mine. This is one of mine. So this is very shape oriented. All right, this is uh, Burkittsville. So I'll give you an idea of the way I handled that. I try to keep it simple and abstract. And I think, you know, you need to start to think a little bit about how you make things work. This is another one of mine. I won't talk about all of these, but uh, shape and color is very, very important. And when you look at artists like Richard Diebenkorn here, you see how important it's putting the shapes against the colors. So we need to teach you to make shape, all right? And here's a very interesting one because it is buildings, all right? but it's painted in a way with a palette knife and scrape. So you wouldn't know exactly that, but these are a lot of the ones that we're talking about. And maybe you can come up with some ideas or some designs, all right? But the um, shape is really important. And by the way, I was going through uh, Pinterest and all of a sudden I come across this painting, I really like it. And it's the late Helen Corning that used to teach for me. So it was really interesting to see her work. And she was somewhat of a minimalist. This is David Sharp. And he's doing that same kind of thing. Sunset usually gives you that, the backlighting, all right? Uh, this is Joseph Albers and Hard Edge Painting and how colors work against one another. So all these artists were influenced by the Japanese, all right? And I think it just led to, to a lot of varieties of ways of dealing with things, including collage, all right? And somebody asked me today about, you know, working with collage. Well, collage, when you cut out the pieces of paper, you're making shapes. Then you're putting the shapes together, you're arranging them. And here's the easiest way to work with shape. But there's a Richard Diebenkorn. There's one there. This is not by Diebenkorn, but it, it's inspired by Diebenkorn. And it becomes abstract because of the way it's, uh, it's presented. This is Nelsworth Kelly. But I just want you to get the most out of this because I want you to really explore line for me. This is um, Milton Avery. All right, and, uh, and these are artists that have done that. Okay, and I think that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna post this up on Facebook and uh, you're gonna be able to, or not on Facebook, on, on YouTube, and you're gonna be able to access it. And what I want you to do, I got charcoal on my head. Oh my God, look at me, that's my hair. Ah. Anyhow, um, what I, what I want you to do is do that for me, okay? To review this and to understand it. And uh, try to, you know, I'm looking for you to do a series of works for me uh, this week. One is some, just some small black and white paintings. They can be small, you know, you just make a window in your sketchbook and just play with some ink or something or watercolor and see what it is to just make black and white, all right? See how the, the key to that is that the, you put the black shapes in until the white shapes have meaning. 
And then the other thing is um, to uh, do a, um, uh, about 10 line drawings, I think I asked you for. You, could, you know, you might pick a theme. You know, we were talking about trying to find a theme for your work. All right, do, do 10 line drawings of a theme. It might be like my wife watching TV every night, you know, and me taking it and doing line drawings of her. All right. And then the other is um, to do me a painting. I think I, I said you could get started on the painting where you did do some backlight lighting. If you have time, all right, we, we have plenty of time to get things done, but we're going to share them. And what I'd like you to do is to send them to me at walt at yellowbarnstudio.net. And in the heading of the email, you say homework and you put L S F, all right, landscape studio and figure or L F S, whatever. Okay, but I'll know exactly what that is. And uh, if you can put the date on it, that would be great. And the heading of the email, because when I go to search for these, I need to be able to search for something and it'll be like LSF, uh, all right, um, landscape studio and figure. And then you can kind of, um, you know, uh, and have homework because I'm going to put homework in first. All right. And we'll be able to critique some of your work next week. But really, you know, come and give me, you know, just do do the uh, the drawings that I said here. All right. And if you have any questions, let me know. You can email me anytime. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to say good night and uh, check this video out. All right. Thanks, Mike.